Our next talk is our platinum sponsor, one of our platinum sponsors is Siemens Health and Ears. And this is Christian, now I do, ha do have to get his name correct here, uh, Gerrit. 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 I tried to get it earlier on, anyway. Uh, he's going to tell us what's new in MRA with Se from Siemens Health and Ears perspective. Thank you, Christian. Thanks so much for the introduction. Yeah, um, allow me to start with um, what's not new, and that's uh, myself. Even though I'm a rookie, uh, SMRA first timer, um, I've been around uh, MR uh, for quite some time. As, as you can see, this was first time I was in, in Japan. I looked a bit younger, and that was also before the invention of selfies, apparently. All right. But why are we here? What um, um, motivates us? And, and this is actually directly continuing from where, where Jerry left it off. Um, so um, I'm a little bit tired <laughs> um, within Siemens and within the, uh, the community to justify cardiac MR, uh, cardiovascular um, MMR, because we are obviously such a, a small piece of the pie chart here. Um, and as you know, we have not completely grown in the in the last years. And um, uh, if you if you want to talk about this later, uh, I, I I'm I'm looking at this way too often. Also, how does it um, how does it develop in the different countries? Which is of course a, a very different stories. And and you know, in some countries, would play a much much bigger role, and in others even smaller. Um, so it's a very complex um, topic, but but very important and and. Um, we want to grow <laughs> and so what what can we do about this and of course of, of all the the people uh, and roles that are involved in in cardiovascular MR we have um, different interests um, some are overlapping and and um, um, speed for example is one of those yeah so the the patient wants to have a fast exam ideally free breathing for the technologist and the operator it should be fast, it also should be robust for all of the patients, and it needs to be easy to use. Um, one of the big problems, uh, especially in the last couple of years in many, many countries, has been a, a, la um, a lack of staff, a shortage of, of staff, even so that even in, in university hospitals, um, I've heard it uh, just recently, they don't even operate the scanners every day of, of the week, yeah, because they don't have enough uh, technologists. And then for the reader um, or the, um, the management of the site, you want to have consistent high quality scans to, to satisfy your referrals, of course, and automated uh, scans ideally get the results immediately at the scanner in line, um, and so you need the right tools. And then ultimately it needs to be economically viable, and of course this is out of our reach uh, if it comes to reimbursement and so on, but of course we want to, to work with you, with the uh, communities to you know, provide arguments to, to fight for an appropriate and competitive um, reimbursement of, of the scans. And let's start with, um, with something that we are just rolling out as a, as a product, and um, this is an improvement of how we have uh, done it before, so and scan planning assistance um, for, for angiography, for multistation angiography, the um, uh, MyExam Angio Assist. And um, what's, what's needed here is, of course, if you want to, to do multiple, uh, multiple stations, it needs to be easy to plan, uh, but it still needs to be variable. Yeah, so depending on the, on the patient height, you need to have um, more or less uh, stations, but still within the, the different stations, you want to have individual parameterization, individual voice commands, um, and both for test bolos as well as for care bolos. And um, the way we um, do this now is actually provide automatic coverage from abdomen to the feet based on the fast view results, so you get automatic landmark uh, detection, and, uh, and then according to the patient height, you get the appropriate number of, of blocks. And so the planning has now become much easier because you have one, uh, one generalized uh, prescription for this, but still gives you the flexibility 
um, to get to get individual parameters and of course the breathing uh, commands um, and the timing optimized in just the stations where you need it. But I'm here to tell you about pre-development and, and research, so said let's switch gears to that. Uh, one of the topics that we have uh, been working on with uh, our next year's hosts, uh, Claudia Prieto and René Botner, is um, 3D whole heart uh, sequence that can be run either as a um, coronary and, uh, angiography um, um, flavor or as a 3D LGE uh, sequence, both for 1.5 Tesla as well as for 3 Tesla. And one of the key um, features is this um, image-based navigator, um, which allows you to get 100% scan efficiency and predictable scan time. And in particular for coronary angiography, this is, uh, can be a quite a nice advantage because it allows you to fit it just into the the, um, the, the block or the, uh, the pause that you have before your um, LGE scans. And um, um, this combined with some other features, in particular um, motion, uh, motion correction allows us to do this, again, with the predictable scan time and very fast scan time, um, but still high resolution scans, 3D isotropic, and in particular for the 3D LGE, um, we, we see some uh, fantastic feedback um, because of, of the more and more demand uh, to do pre and post ablation uh, LGE scans. And um, a close relative sequence to this is um, uh, the boost se uh, sequence, which you would run uh, natively as um, bright and, and, and black blood for CMR and geography. And um, again, the King's College team here has been pioneering this, but now also uh, run on a number of other uh, uh, sites. Um, um, also here, for example, um, for vessel wall imaging and uh, vulnerable plug imaging. And um, um, we've been also working here with uh, Budapest uh, Semmelweis University, and they have tried this um, <laughs> in a 1.5 Tesla case, uh, one of 1.5 Tesla scanner um, for the carotids. Um, so just just started to to do this, and then they had a, a patient um, who uh, with uh, very low renal functions, and they needed to do a number of follow-ups. So they switched from CT um, to to the MR here, and as you can see, there's st certainly still room for optimization, but um, 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 obviously it's very uh, easy to see here. Um, and here you can see the carotid stenosis again in, in this boost scan with T2 prep. And then, uh, <laughs> um, as you have seen in the in the morning from Ludovica, um, so this is work uh, um, done in Lausanne in Matthias Stuber's team, um, uh, where they are using these uh, 5D whole heart um, um, free running scans and collecting huge numbers, uh, huge huge amounts of data so that re reconstruction ta can take a bit of time. Um, but as I said, we want to be able to provide results directly at the scanner. So the question was, how can you do um, an inline um, preview of, of the, um, the offline reconstruction? And what was uh, introduced two or three years ago and got an award here also uh, was this Zimba approach, a similarity-driven um, algorithm um, uh, for these ferromoxitol scans, so it wor works very, very nicely. You know that you'll get a nice result before the patient leaves uh, the scanner. Um, now the question was, of course, how can this be um, applied in non-contrast cases? And then um, um, as Ludovica has combined this with the, um, the pilotone technology, and if you actually have never heard of this, please come <laughs> talk to me, talk to the, the colleagues, because it's quite a disruptive uh, technology that's now, that's now available on many, many scanners. And um, yeah, here, as you can see, the additional MR scan independent dimension that you introduce with the, with the pilotone uh, allows to solve this problem also in a non-contrast case. And then another example, as you all know, that can be quite time-consuming 
uh, not only in the scanning but also in the um, in the um, post position uh, post processing uh, uh, realm is, is of course 4d flow um, and we've heard some um, related uh, works in the in the in the morning um, uh, our goal of course and this is uh, uh, Ning and the, the Northwestern team working together to put as much um, as possible into the inline, so into the reconstruction directly at the scanner. So for the for the first time, really get as much as possible um, of the 4D flow analysis done on the scanner. So in this case, background phase correction, AI-based um, uh, 3D segmentation, and then already the flow pattern visualization and also flow flow quantification. And this is possible with our fire framework uh, that allows us to enable users to put their own algorithms, be it in MATLAB, be it in Python, or their own networks to plug it uh, directly into the um, reconstruction queue. And here's um, what you can get um, at the scanner. So this is actually uh, unpublished data here. Um, um, but as you can see, uh, you already get uh, quite a bit of the analysis that typically um, takes a bit of time uh, in post processing afterwards. Let's uh, move back to the brain for a second. <coughs> Another intracranial uh, application that we have just um, started to introduce to uh, our partners is um, non-contrast 4D scan, so PCASL based, um, but with high acceleration factors, as you can see here, compressing factors of 12. Um, so you can get a, a reasonable acquisition uh, time in something like uh, six minutes, and that was uh, done on a three Tesla scanner. And we would be very interested in hearing um, yeah, your, your feedback about this if you're, if you're interested in using it. Um, another very flexible sequence that uh, Daniel Giese will talk about uh, in something like half an hour <laughs> um, is uh, the, what we call the advanced MRA, which is combining a lot of uh, features like T2 prep, um, like Dixon, like high uh, compress sensing acceleration factors, um, and that allows you to do high resolution scanning again isotropically. Um, however, different from what I've shown before, this is using a conventional MR navigator, as you can see here. Um, but it has uh, a very wide um, range of applications so far already, so as you can see here, this is in the native um, um, case, but you can also set it up for a um, single breath hold, short breath hold, uh, triggered uh, contrast enhanced angiography. And this was shown earlier today by Ning uh, and collaboration with uh, Lon Simonetti's group at Ohio State. Um, this is working nicely even at the 0.55 Tesla uh, lower SNR regime. And then I, I feel like nowadays you can't talk enough about AI. Um, and again, coming back to my uh, initial um, point, <coughs> we have to be able to make it as easy as possible for the operator. So we want to enhance what we already have out there for scanner systems. So um, we've started a number of years ago already with the traditional machine learning based uh, user guidance that gives you automatic landmark detection and enables the planning of uh, a number of, of um, uh, scan slices. But nowadays, obviously, with, with deep learning and the computing power and the larger amounts of available data, we can go much further. So we want to also automate the navigator volume setting, also placement of the adjustment volumes, to have a complete auto positioning. And, and then in addition, um, for example, the automatic resting phase, um, we also heard about this in the morning. Um, this, this can be a, a topic that not every technologist is familiar with, how to set the right uh, scan window here. So this is something we, we think we should um, support the user to do. And in addition, something that can be easily done 
by uh, an algorithm is to set the right TI. So we're doing a TI scout and let the machine select the right um, timing. And if we put this all together, although these are individual modules, um, we can um, yeah, really provide a full cardiac scan companion. Um, a number of these modules have already been evaluated and, and, and published. Um, recently, um, the um, resting phase detection uh, was actually um, tested here at uh, Ehime University in Japan with very comparable results, no significant differences between the algorithm and, um, and the, um, the human operator. And on the scanner, um, the way we do this, because it's modular, we just fit it into a normal queue. So we're not talking about a rigid scan or um, a multi-parametric uh, approach, but it's really a normal scan queue where we have individual um, localizers um, to start off. And, uh, and from these, the algorithm is plugged into, and then we can, we can derive all the necessary information for the following scans, and this can be really done <coughs> in a single click. And this was um, recently um, uh, presented uh, clinically at ECR and technically at the ISMRM. Um, the first study here, at University of Lübeck, um, and in this case, actually, as you might see, the, um, the scan queue is very different from what we had uh, suggested, but it was their scan queue, so we, um, we customized this. Um, we just had to plug the algorithms into the right, into the right uh, places. And um, um, we were very happy with the uh, early results. So from 44 consecutive patients, the algorithm could perform the complete exam without any user inter interaction in 40 cases. Uh, and, and, and three of the remaining cases was actually congenital heart disease. And honestly, I'm, I'm quite happy if, if these are the, the, the problem cases because that needs expertise. Um, and one, one remaining case was uh, a large infarct, um, which was uh, throwing off the auto TI uh, algorithm, but we have since then uh, improved that already. Um, th then we thought, all of these initial planning steps, can't we actually uh, make this easier? Um, because we, by the time um, we start actually the diagnostic scanning, we sometimes, if we, we, if we need a lot of planning planes, um, we will get uh, uh, maybe two minutes, maybe three minutes already in. So one of our students uh, came up with this quite convoluted network of uh, three units um, from one uh, advanced MRA scan, so from a 3D scan, and um, derive all of the uh, 12 imaging planes uh, from one um, um, original free breathing scan. And this is how it can be set up. Actually, you only need one localizer if you position right in the, in the beginning. And then uh, you have this normal um, navigated scan, and I'll speed up here the, the video, obviously you get two fat and water volumes from this, feed this into the algorithm. The algorithm when will then uh, derive <laughs> this uh, very confusing number of planes here, but this is what your technologists are doing, yeah? <laughs> and um, you can set it up if you don't need all of these. And then you can get a, a multi-plane localizer um, if you like to confirm all of these positions that then will be later on uh, used in the scan. And with that, again, I'd like to reiterate, we really need to be able to scan faster, do it robust, ideally in a free breathing way, and we want to provide automated inline results and make it really easy to use for, for everybody. And thank you for your attention. <coughs>